I want to thank Physics Ninja for his help and guidance on this one. I found Physics Ninja videos very helpful. He doesn't have a whole lot of breadth to it, but the ones that he has done, they're the standard ones, and then he actually has gone into some depth that I haven't seen in any other sources, so I do appreciate Physics Ninja. Let's take a look at the RC Parallel DC circuit. So we start out with a situation where I've got this resistor R2 and my capacitor in parallel to each other. I do have this resistance in here. I'm going to try to use the convention of the lowercase letters to represent variables that change with time and the uppercase things that are sort of constant. Well, and let's establish that I have current flowing out of my power supply or battery across resistance one, and then it splits into what I'm calling I sub C and I sub R. So the junction rule, looking at that junction, is that I is equal to I R plus I C. The loop rule is that epsilon plus delta V R1 plus delta V C is equal to zero, or if I went the outer loop here, epsilon plus delta V R1 plus delta V R2 is equal to zero. Now, I am making the assumption that the voltage of the power supply is at its maximum as soon as I complete the circuit, and that it the capacitance here will build up in charge. So that's why I'm using a lowercase for I and C. Take an equation two. Plugging in our, my equations that I know for voltage of resistors and voltage of capacitors, I have epsilon minus IR1 minus QC over C is equal to zero. And then if I solve for QC, I get epsilon C minus IC R1. Finding the current IC, because ultimately I've got this other equation here, that IC is just the derivative of this with respect to time. And so I end up with my I sub C is equal to negative C R1 di dt. Taking equation three, Epsilon minus IR1 minus I sub R, R2 is equal to zero. And then solving for R, I, R, we get this equation right here, that's just a straight up no calculus involved. And now we can take my equations four and five and plug that into equation one. And I have I is equal to Epsilon minus I, R1 over R2 plus negative CR1 di dt. So now I have an equation with just I in it. And so it's a matter of solving for I. And so I want to get all the I's on one side, and I've got the, the progression right here. And at this point, it's obviously not finished, but we need to get the I's on one side and not I's on the other. So I'm going to take my numerator here and bring this down, and then I'm going to take my negative CR1, bring this over, and the DT over to the left-hand side. And we end up with this. Now we integrate, and we end up with a some constant, K1, if you see my other videos, again, it's this, this K1 is not necessarily related to any other constant that I, I've used before, but I get negative T over C R1 R2 plus this constant is equal to one over R1 plus R2 times the natural log of this. And if you're this step right here, just some use substitution. All right, again, I'm ultimately trying to solve for I, so I need to get rid of everything else. And so first off, let's just take my fraction right here and multiply both sides by the reciprocal. This is some other constant. This would be K1 times the, the R1 plus R2, but it's just some other constant. So I don't really care what the value is specifically at this point. And then I used properties of, of logarithms. And so I now have E to this term right here, and that can be broken up into e raised to this fraction here times e raised to k2. And I end up with this. This is just some other constant. e to a constant is a constant. So I'm just going to call that k3. I can now solve for i by adding epsilon to both sides and then dividing by r1 plus r2. And I end up with this equation here. I know that my capacitance is q over delta vc. And so delta vc is equal to q over c. So at time is equal to zero, my capacitor is uncharged. So that therefore that must be true. And so at the initial moment, this is my equation. So I initially is just epsilon over R1. If I plug that into here, looking at time is equal to zero seconds, then well, if time is zero, that whole 
exponent becomes zero and e to the zero is one. So I have some constant plus epsilon over r1 plus r2, which is just is equal to epsilon over r1. Again, we're looking at the condition, the boundary condition of time is equal to zero. And then we can solve for k3. K3 is then epsilon r2 over r1. Therefore, my formula for a current becomes this, plugging in my value for k3, which, you consider it simplified or not, I consider this simplified, so I factored out the epsilon and then as such. So let's check to make sure that it still makes some sense. So at time is equal to zero, we plug in it, that term right there becomes zero, so e to the zero is one. I'm left with R2 over R1 plus one, got a common denominator, add them together, and we end up with this times that is equal to epsilon over R1, which is what we hoped it would be. So obviously we didn't screw up in that mathematics. And then let's take the next extreme with the capacitor being filled. So no more charge just flows to it. So that, and, with, and if we let time go to infinity, the capacitor is filled and therefore no charge flows onto it. And so the current flowing onto it is zero and therefore the current and IR are the same. And so my equation becomes this, which is just the simple, if there were no capacitor and I had two resistors in series. Or plugging into this equation right here, just to make sure it's still making sense. Again, we plug infinity in for T. And so this term right here becomes negative infinity. And so E to the negative infinity is zero. For you, the math purist, I know we're talking about limits. This is physics speak. And we have epsilon over R1 plus R2 times one, and we get epsilon over R1 plus R2. And so what we got through thinking through it is the same thing we get by plugging into my equation here. So therefore my current equation or my current plot would start out at epsilon over R1 and eventually goes to epsilon over R1 plus R2. If we wanna see what the current flowing across the capacitor is, which is the equation four, we had I sub C is negative C R1 di dt. There's my equation for I right there, taking the derivative with respect to time, we get this. And ultimately we simplifies down to this equation here. And so this is what the current flowing across the capacitor would look like. How does IR change with time. Again, I expect most of the current to flow across the capacitor. So let's go back to the original drawing. Initially, I expect more, all the current to be flowing across the capacitor and none to be flowing really across this resistor here because the this offers no resistance initially. I have resistance here, I don't have resistance here. And so initially the current's gonna to get to this point, go, ooh, I got no resistance this way. I've got resistance this way. I'm gonna go this way. So I start out with all the current flowing this way and none flowing that way. Let's see if that's what we get. So I take my equation for I sub R, which I had figured out was this. We plug in our equation for I and it eventually simplifies down into this equation here. So this would be the equation for I sub R which would plot out like that, but we can do a quick check. At time is equal to zero, we get one minus one, because this whole thing becomes one. And so we get zero, which is what we'd expect. And at time is equal to infinity, the current approaches epsilon over R1 plus R2, which is what we got on the other page. And then another check is if we let R2 go to infinity, and recall that R2 is the resistor parallel to the capacitor. So if we let R2 go to infinity, we end up with, well, I take my equation for I, which we had done a couple pages earlier. It simplifies down into this. And so we end up with IR is equal to zero, which is what I would expect. And IC looks like that, which is very similar to what we had before. And, but the graph looks like that little bit different than the fact that R2 did not go away so easily. And the step from here to here, in case you've not seen it immediately, is that I'm basically going to break this fraction up into the sum of two fractions, because if I distribute the T, I've got uh, two terms being added together in the numerator. And by rules of how you deal with exponents, I can break that into E to the negative 
T1R1 over CR1R2 times E to the negative TR2 over CR1R2. Over here, my R1s cancel out. I'm left with negative T over CR2. And then the R2s cancel out here. I'm left with E to the negative T over CR1. And this term right here, my numerator is practically zero as R. Let's start out at time is equal to zero, but then R2 goes to infinity. And so this term becomes inconsequential very quickly. And so that basically is one. And we're left with epsilon over R1 times e to the negative t over CR1, which is what I've written right there.